You're listening to the Teach Better Talk podcast featuring expert educators eager to share progressive tactics to reach more students. Teach Better Talk is created by teachers and fueled by passion. Let's get started. Welcome to episode 276 of Teach Better Talk podcast. We have, how do I phrase this? We've been up to some shenanigans. <laughs> My name is Ray Hewart. I am with the almighty Jeff Gargas. And let's just put it this way, guys. We have a lot of extra B-roll that Chris is going to take and make us look terrible someday when he releases it to the public. I feel that's, like, that's where we're at. I feel like telling our Teach Better Talk um listeners that we are of the shenanigans is like they're like yeah uh, sure that's why i listen like what it what is no but i feel like today was worse like chris you can put like a yep or a no listen, with some sort of sound right here but what, it was worse today. you can call whatever you want i'm pretty sure what i did just before this was absolute gold so like <laughs> it gold. was fantastic um mm-hmm. comedic nope. genius i think uh, like i had you rolling i don't know if it was out of anger frustration laughter or pity but you know one of those yeah um, one of those so we're currently recording that's what we're doing we right are now. in case you forgot um yeah. so so here's the best part about this is that these shenanigans we're talking about like are going to be happening a lot more because like we're gonna be live a lot which means they're not just for Chris anymore. Everyone gets to see them more and more and more. Um, That's true. Because if you don't know, if you're listening and you're not aware, daily drop-ins are back. And that's exactly what it sounds like. It's us dropping in daily, live, five days a week. I guess there's two days that we're not going to do it daily, so it's not. Well, actually, I figured it out because we're live for our Twitter chat recap mm-hmm. and brain break yep. and then every morning seven for Daily Drop-In. So we're live seven at least. That's without anything extra. We're seven live times. at least seven times a week. Yep. Yes. Wow. And so Daily Drop-In is going to be every every day, every weekday, right? Monday through Friday at... Monday through Friday. What time is that? 7 a.m. Eastern 7 time? 7 a.m. Eastern. Yep. Early. That gets you started, get your day going. I mean, and we've got like, it's going to be, we've got all kinds of guests lined up and different themes and stuff we're talking. Like, it's going to be a lot of fun. And every Monday, it's you and me. Every Monday, it's you and me. And every week has a new theme. We have guests popping in who have a lot to share, not only about the themes that we will continue to celebrate, but also in the comments, answering your questions, sharing their stories. I'm so excited. Are, are we allowed to? I don't know what's out and what's not out. I should, but I don't right now. Are we allowed to show oh, the, the the set like what's every Friday? Is that is that public knowledge yet? I mean, can it's we right now to our of, podcast? I don't know why not. Let's do it. Sure. Every Friday, starting at the end of August, once we get a few weeks in, is going to be with Brad Hughes. Brad Hughes from the Good News Brad News podcast, which is part of the Teach Better Podcast Network. If you don't know Brad, like he's awesome. Yeah, that that's good. Fridays are going to be just a blast. Like, I can't wait till he starts doing voices and stuff because people don't realize that could do some do some some awesome voice impressions and stuff. So, so that's starting. Um, this podcast comes out on the second, which means today is the day the daily drop ins are officially back. Yeah, and here's how this works, guys. So, the daily drop in streams in the morning. We said seven a.m. Eastern. You can catch it on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and Twitch. And obviously, anytime we record, anytime we're live. Everything is saved on that platform. So if you want to head to the Teach Better Team YouTube channel or the Facebook page, like you can see all those lives there. But what we are also doing is we are taking those videos, we are stripping the audio, and we are making it into a podcast. So you already listened to the Teach Better Talk podcast. We'd love to have you go subscribe to the Daily Drop-In Podcast, which will be our live podcast equivalent so that you can hear all the shenanigans that happen not only the current day that you hopefully are catching Catching up on, but also the whole shenanigan the whole week. It's going to be so fun. And I want to highlight what you said there is that, it is, is that it's a new podcast. It's not going to be on it. I know in the past we've done some bonus episodes here on Teach Better Talk on this stream with with those live. But this is it's going to be its own podcast, Daily drop with the Teach Better team, because it's going to be a lot. Like five episodes yeah. a week. You're going to have a lot to listen to. Um, so super excited about that. Super yeah, excited. we're really excited. And like I said, I mean, the guests that are coming on are from all over in our network. We'd love to not only amplify those stories of people that you already know, maybe they've already been on Teach Better Talk podcast or they're members of the team or anything in between, but also bring in some new faces, some new voices and continue to celebrate. So if you're somebody who enjoys 
connecting with other educators. If you love a safe space to brainstorm, if you're looking to continue to be inspired and supported and connected, come hang out with us over on the Daily Drop-In Podcast. We're so excited. I love that. And that's a great segue actually into talking about this episode because our guest Marie talked a lot about uh, a couple of different things about being connected and connecting with other educators and growing your PLN and the power that that has had for her. Um, and now she's a Teach Better ambassador, which is awesome. But uh, Marie McCumber is uh, she's an elementary school teacher uh, at a school for the blind here in Ohio. Uh, she's had a lot of really, I think, unique experience in, in education and what she's done and shares a whole lot of really cool. So I'm going to just say, like Marie was telling us she was struggling to find the the failure story and then she just blew me away with her failure story. So this is an awesome episode. We're so happy that she could be on it. We're so, so just honored to have her as, as one of our ambassadors and in our world. So I think you're going to love this episode, right? Anything to add or should we just dive into it? Let's dive into it. All right. Episode 276 with Marie McCumber. What's up, Teach Better family? It's Jeff. And I want to make you aware of another amazing webinar series kicking off on August 2nd. This is two weeks, four sessions with the amazing Ray Hewer. During these four sessions, you're going to learn how to build an intro mastery grid for use with the Grid Method Mastery Learning System. You're going to get example grids, templates, lifetime access to the replays of all the sessions, live coaching. This is something you do not want to miss. This is going to be an incredible webinar series. You can take so much away from this that you can put into action right away getting ready for the next school year. So head over to teachbetter.com slash summer intro grid and get registered today. All right, we are here. We are chatting with Marie McCumber. And Marie, it's so awesome to have you on the podcast. Super excited that you were able to carve out some time and hang out with Ray and I for a little bit. Uh, we're excited to get just kind of dive in and learn more about you and your story and what you got going on. Before we get too far into that stuff, how are you feeling right now? Hot. I feel hot. <laughs> it's I July. <laughs> it's July in Ohio, and we've reached that like hot and like oppressive mugginess. Yeah. And um, I tried to walk today and I was like, this was a mistake. This was a <laughs> I, wish you hadn't, I wish you hadn't elaborated on that. Cause like, <laughs> how are you feeling today? And everyone was sitting in their car like, yeah, I can't wait to hear what she's feeling. And you're just like, I'm feeling really hot. <laughs> <laughs> I should have actually, yeah, that would have been a better response. You right. have been having some AC issues, so we are all yes. sending some cool breeze your way, just so you know. Yes. Thank you. I appreciate it. Like, Well, and I know that we're going to have so many like fun questions, so much laughter. I, I know that we've already been like joking before we press record, but before we <laughs> get into all that, I do want to kind of introduce you a little bit more to our audience, kind of sure. answering that age-old question of like, hey, what do you do, right? You have a really cool background, so I'm really excited to, to dive into <laughs> all that, but just give me the bio. Like, what do you do in education? So I'm an elementary teacher at the Ohio State School for the Blind. I currently teach fifth grade. I can teach anywhere within the elementary school department, um, depending on the need. I started as a fourth grade teacher. I moved up with my class to fifth grade, and I will be fifth grade again. Um, I do so many cool and awesome things all day long in my job. I, uh, I read and I play and we have great conversations. Um, we explore and get messy and keep trying. And, um, you know, I can give you the technical stuff. I teach Braille and we do technology and I uh, work with helping students access their world and access their academics. And um, I would fight anybody <laughs> to say that I have the best job in the world. Like, I absolutely do. Well, I love that. You're ready to fight people. I would fight people. I would. <laughs> She's ready. Don't even challenge her. She's got a family. She's coming for you. So what, let, let's talk about this best job in the world because that, mm -hmm. that's a unique role. Not many, there's, there's only, you know, not many people teach at, at a school for the blind and work in a, just a different environment. Well, can I just Are, preface, Jeff, you have the best job in the world. Are you saying that, that you don't have the best job in the world? Listen, I know working with you every day is the best job in the world. I just don't want to <laughs> fight Marie because I don't think I'll win. So we're not going to go there. Um, but, so Marie, did, did you teach anywhere else before? Have you always been at this school, at this, at the, the school for blind? Have you been in others or? Yeah, I started as a multiple disabilities teacher. I've, okay. I've taught at two public schools and one private school in my career before starting at the school for the blind. I'm actually going into my 13th year of teaching 
in the fall. Um, I started at a public school. I went to a private school, went back to a public school before getting a job at the School for the Blind, which is also a public school. It's just a different public mm-hmm. school. So, so mm-hmm. for someone, for, for teachers that, 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 are, that have never worked with students who are blind, what mm-hmm. is the, what's the biggest, and, and this interests me, I have, a lot of people don't know that I have an, uh, um, a very rare genetic disease that I was born with when I was in my left eye. I'm not blind, mm-hmm. but in my left eye, I'm about 86% blind. So I've, I've looked, I've studied a lot and looked in because mm-hmm. early on in my life, they thought for sure I was just going, I was going to eventually become blind. So it was something that, so this just really just interests me when I realized what you taught. If, mm-hmm. if, if I were to ask you, Hey, what's the biggest difference working with students that are that are, that are blind outside of, you know, obviously the fact that they have that, you know, that challenge in their life that they have overcome for you as a teacher, what's the biggest difference or, or is, is it no it's the same, same thing. We're just teaching slightly different, um, either using slightly different tools and slightly different methods, or is it a very big difference or is it really just, is my question making sense? I feel like I'm not sure if I'm yeah. asking the right way. Yeah. Like, you're, you're, really you're like, making is, sense. And it's, it doesn't it's... happen often, by the way. <laughs> Yeah, it does make sense. And I would say to answer that question, it's actually very hard because I came from multiple disabilities, um, taught students who had severe mobility problems, were nonverbal, things like that. So I was a very specialized teacher in a public school. And then I go to a, a the school for the blind and now I am a fifth grade teacher. You know, I could say I'm a content teacher now instead of an intervention teacher, although I do intervention as well. I'm a content teacher and really my classroom, like, yes, I have some SLD and I, um, I can have some intellectual disabilities and they can have other things, but really in my classroom, they're, they're just visually impaired. Um, Mm -hmm. so in a lot of ways, if you take the visual impairment out of it, they're the same kids that you were teaching in fifth grade in, you know, hometown USA, anywhere. However, you can't say that fully because of how much information we take in visually. We mm-hmm. take in most of our information visually. Like 90% of the information we take in is visually. So if you think about that, If you think about how much you take in and then you put a deficit on that, that's a huge deficit um, that you, you put on these kids, especially our kids who either are born totally blind or their vision is lost totally at a very young age. Our low vision kids they still have a hard time, but they're still getting some of that visual input. Sure. Yeah. Our totally blind kids, especially if they're from birth, you think about they are delayed in their development. They're delayed in their access of literacy. They are delayed um, cognitively because they're missing information that would have come in visually from before. So the answer to that question is, a lot more complex than just saying, yeah, they're the same or no, they're different for these like three reasons. It's, it's a very individualistic thing. And and I'm, and I'm, I'm glad that that's the way that you answered that because I was hoping that's what it is. The fact that sort of two parts of the one, it's super complex um, and and individualized, but also they're still kids, right? Right. So I love that you kind of started there and then dove in a little bit deeper. I really appreciate that. Yeah. Um, and, and just appreciate the work you do. It's important. Uh, let's move the, you, we already know you told us beforehand, this is the question you were a little worried about and struggling with. So I'm going to go right to, we're going to get into it. Um, and that's my favorite question, which is when we talk about failure and a story of a failure or a challenge, something you had to overcome. So are you there or is this going to be the fail story? Did you think of one or is this the one we're going to tell later on at some other podcast? Well, you know, uh, what's but- funny. I was going to be like, one time I was on a podcast for the Teach Better team. <laughs> I love it. You can't use that though. I'm going to make you do something different. But share a story with us about the time you've had a failure and you've had to overcome that. Kind of Take us there with you. What happened? How did you overcome that? And then would you pull away from that experience? 
That's a hard question because like I said, I said before we, before we got started, my mind got really stuck on one thing. Um, however, there was a, there was one student I had and I was a very early year teacher I was a very, um, I'm never sure what to call an early year teacher. Cause sometimes you get those teachers, those first year teachers that come out the gate and they're really good. And at least from outside looking in, we're all going, wow, that person is really good. <laughs> um, <laughs> even though they might be like in their classroom being like, I don't know what I'm doing. Um, so I, I think I know I learned a ton in my first year teaching um, by doing a lot wrong. And, you know, one of, one of my students, I had a lot of, uh, compliance issues with um and now so that is something i have evolved from you know uh coming out of a multiple disabilities severe behavior training you know there's a heavy emphasis on kind of a compliance-based classroom right um setting up structure expecting certain things um and there was a student who i had issues with he constantly gave me pushback Constantly, constantly. He was this adorable, tiny kindergarten student uh, who would get up on tables and try to fly, you know, jump off and try to fly. So, you know, the harder he pushed back, the harder I tried to get that compliance out of him. And there was one day that... There was one day, what he did was to get out of doing a job, to get out of doing an activity, I I had these shelves and they were very, it was this rolling cart with these super thin shelves. They couldn't have been more than six inches wide. And he got into the bottom shelf of that, like laid totally flat and was just looking out at me. And I was dumbfounded because I didn't know what to do. <laughs> like, I'm like, do I pull you out? Do I leave you there? Like, <laughs> and, you know, the way he was looking at me, though, it was like for that moment, I finally kind of saw him. And I just kind of looked at him and I'm like, do you need a hug? And he was like, yeah, I could use a hug. And he climbed out. And we actually spent the rest of our time working together. I sat on the floor and I had, I found this picture the other day of us. Somebody snapped a picture of us doing it. One of my assistants and I'm, he's sitting like his back is on my chest and he's like kind of using me as a chair almost. And he's sitting there doing the thing I wanted him to do. And he was, what happened was, is he was craving contact he was craving connection is what it was. And it really, it really started to change my mind a lot about my classroom and my classroom practices and um, started evolving a less stringent, I'm, I'm the keeper of the classroom, you know, I'm going to change your behavior by doing X, Y, and Z to we're going to make a connection and maybe we don't get done with this thing today, but if you feel better leaving than when you did, then, then when you did coming in, then we've accomplished something at least. Wow. That, that is for someone who was struggling to find a story. Wow. Uh, that is powerful. I, I love that you struggled with that. And then that's what we got out of that. That, that was, that's a powerful, powerful, you know, I love when you said like in that moment you saw him, I was just like, I was just nodding my head over like, Oh, that's man. I feel I, everyone listening just felt that. Cause they're feeling the time that they finally saw that kid. Mm -hmm. Right. Cause they're all picturing their, their, their student that they had that one year in that one class that was like that. Especially <clears throat> our behavior kids, you know, yes, yeah. Espe especially I always, I, I have a special love for our, you know, our labeled behavior, behaviorally mm -hmm. challenged kids. Um, and it's really, it's really grown from a strong evolution in my teaching, honestly. Um, 
I went in saying, this was before I had kids, you know, when I was a teacher and before I had kids, I went in saying, I want to treat your kids like I would treat my own kids, my own child. But I don't think I really practiced what I preached at, at right out the gate, if mm-hmm. that makes sense. It really took time for me to start actually believing the words that I was saying and to truly start practicing them. I believed in inclusion. I believed in whole child practices, but I was really leaning hard on, well, this is what I was taught to do in my classes in college. So yeah. those people know more than me. Like, <laughs> So I need to do that. Um, and uh, I was I was having a discussion with Elijah Carbajal just a couple weeks ago talking about, you know, some of my best moments in teaching was standing behind what I, what I kind of knew in my gut rather than what everybody else was telling me was the best thing to do. Um, you know, listening to the people in the communities that I serve and, you know, thinking about me as now me as a parent, like, what would I think about this? How would I feel about this? Um, and going from there. You know, I just, I love the story you picked for your failure story because I think everybody, every educator kind of has that moment where they've finally made progress in a student that they've been struggling with. And whether it's the smallest moment of progress or a huge success like yours, I just feel like your your story just had such a wonderful ending. Those moments kind of lean into why we do what we do, right? Why we teach, why we dedicate so much time to this this incredible craft, why we really believe there is more out there um, and that we can do good work. And I, I just, I love that. I think it was such a powerful story. And I want to kind of twist that into question about excitement, because mm-hmm. as you look at all the work you've done, and I have such a a personal soft spot for educators that specifically work with students that that have hurdles in front of them and the educators that truly show them that they can overcome those hurdles. I, I am such a such a fan of the work that you do. But with everything that you're currently doing, not only with students, but also in education as a whole, mm-hmm. supporting other teachers, what's really keeping you excited right now about what you're doing? I will tell you the community and I, I feel like this is kind of a like a self indulgent answer, but the community I have found in Teach Better has made me, not only has it made me a better teacher, it's made me a more excited teacher about mm-hmm. about the career, about the field, about the people that are doing it. And I am excited that my, my PLN has grown so much. I can watch so many amazing teachers do so many amazing things. And then I can go, I want to try that. I want to try that. I'm going to try that. I made a connection with Noah Daniels, who does this amazing work with analyzing photography in her classroom. Um, Well, she does contractual and consulting now, but when she did it and I connected with her, I was like, I want to do this but I'm not sure how to adapt it for my kids. And I started like pinging ideas off of her. And just that like, you know, I heard about her on another podcast. I started following her on Twitter. I saw what she was doing and saw it was so cool. I messaged her and she messaged me back. (laughs) And she was super excited that I wanted to take what she was doing and change it to serve a a more population, a greater population of students. And I think that's so exciting right now is the network and connections we can make and the ideas that we can glean and bounce off of each other right now. Mm. Um, I have so many, I have to, I get really excited and I'm like, I'm going to do all the things. Um, So I really have to be like one thing at a time. Let's do one thing at a time. <laughs> so I, I have a this, lot of us get that way. <laughs> oh man, I have this huge list of stuff. I'm like, okay, so we're going to do this one now, and I am going to wait, <laughs> um, because you know otherwise it'd be a hot mess express. But I think it's I think it's so cool the globalness 
of the connections we can make now and um, how we can network to bring great things in our classroom that we didn't even know were out there from before. And it, it, I, I get super, I get super geeked out. My fiance, he can tell he's like, you're doing, you're doing teacher stuff again, aren't you? And he's a teacher. Like, so I'm like, yes, cause it's so fun and exciting. Like, <laughs> like I'm super revved up about like the coming fall school year and what it's going to bring. Oh my gosh. I love you. Could, you're like radiating excitement. I love listening to this and I love your focus on global connections. Cause truly that has changed my life in terms of my view of education, the problem solving I'm able to do for students, like, holy cow, I, I couldn't agree more. And I guess, I don't know if you want to tie this into your piece of advice, or maybe you want to cheat and provide two. I won't tell Jeff, it'll be fine. But when it comes to a piece of advice that you want to leave teachers, can you either tie it in or give me two separate ones? I'd love to have your piece of advice, but I'd also love to have maybe a piece of advice around how you started growing your network. Because sometimes educators are like, oh, go get on social media. So then people make a profile and then they're like, okay, but how do I actually connect? Like what's Mm -hmm. the actual steps? So I was very active professionally. Um, Actually, I'm going to stop and I'm going to take three steps back from that thought. I started on Twitter what, 10 years ago, really long time ago. And I only used it for news. It's how I got my news because I couldn't stand watching or listening to the news. Um, I used it for news. And then just a couple years ago, um, I started following more education-based news. It's basically what it, how it worked out. I, was, I wanted to know what was going on in the world of education. And specifically education for students with disabilities. And then I started from that, started following a teacher here and there. And then I realized these teachers, they participate in these chats and there's all these chats you can participate with in. And so I, I did one one night. I had never done one before and I did one and it was, um, it was such a great experience and looking at other people's responses, I started following more people. And as I followed people, people started following me back a little bit, but then I started interacting with people, which is really outside of my comfort zone. I, uh, I, I know this is not going to sound truthful. It is hard for me to put myself out there. It actually is. Um, but I would be like, I really want to know about more. That, I really want to know more about what that person was saying. And so I would reach out to them and they would answer me back. That's the most amazing thing about like teacher professional networks that I found is that in social media, Twitter, Voxer, Instagram, Snapchat, wherever you want to go, teachers want to help teachers. Like, they don't want to keep all their good ideas to themselves and not share with you and, you know, like sit on their treasure like it's theirs. No, if you have a question, they want to help because it's ingrained in us to help. It is part of our nature to want to help others, especially if there's a question about something. And really, that was it. I start, it really started small and just got bigger and bigger and bigger and uh, when I became a Teach Better ambassador, it exploded. And I was like, holy people, like there's all, there's suddenly so many people in my life and I love them all because they are all the same way. Like they're excited about teaching and they want to help. And I think that's really what it has to be. You first have to take a step. I'm going to do this platform which is what worked for me. I can't do 14 platforms at once. You can find me on Instagram. I'm terrible. I never post anything on it. I'll go on and look at people's pictures. I'm terrible. But started on one platform and just slowly grew it by seeing how it worked and seeing what other people were putting out there and then putting myself out there 
and reaching out to other people. I think so there was a huge piece of advice. I mean, there ha- yeah. that has to be what people start with. Mm-hmm. So, so, so the, the, the advice I'm pulling out there is to, to get connected, but just start, start somewhere. Yeah. And, 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 and I think a big piece I want people to listen to is that you were utilizing it at, at a certain level when you were in, just like jumping on, following people, listening, watching. Mm-hmm. But then when you started actually engaging and asking questions and asking follow up and putting yourself out there a little bit more is really when it just, the value really started to come in. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. That's a, that's a big piece. But you can, you can start with the lurking, right? We always call it like lurking and when we talk yes. about like teach better, it's that light rake. You can lurk a little bit, you can do that. Right. But when you start to engage, you will find exactly what you said, which is other teachers want to help, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, it's, and it's, it's awesome. That's, I love that story. That's yeah. a great piece of advice with a great, wrapped into a really great story there. Um, all right, well, let's, let's keep this going because you're, you're doing amazing right now. I'm loving oh. this. Thank you. Let's get into the six questions. I'm going to throw these at you. Your goals answer okay. each one in 15 seconds or less. You ready? Sure. What is I feel one? very. <laughs> you feel I, I, I got really stressed out when you said that. Like, <laughs> <laughs> that was my goal. I want to get you really stressed out. Very, very okay. anxious, very tense right now. Okay? Yes. Okay. Are I'm you, good. Are you tense? Yes. Are you High anxious? Strong. Mm-hmm. Okay, great. That's exactly where I want you. Um, <laughs> all right. Yes. What? What is one ed tech tool you cannot live without? Bookshare. Teachers, find Bookshare. Over 1 million accessible title titles available for anyone with a print disability for free. That's blindness, that's dyslexia, that's physical disabilities. Love it. What's, uh, give us a good book you're reading right now. You can give us up to three. Okay, so I'm reading Going Gradeless by Elise Burns and David Frangiosa. I hope I said his name I right. I think you did. Um, I just finished Gutter Child by J.L. Richardson, which was amazing. And I'm just starting The Lost Vintage by Ann Ma. Uh, who do we need to follow on Twitter or Instagram today? You can give us up to three here as well. Uh, Judith Painter, at J. Painter Geog. <laughs> she is a big uh, uh, National Geographic person. Uh, Noah Daniel, uh, at I am no Daniel. <laughs> and Blind New World, at Blind New World. Uh, give us a good YouTube channel, website, or podcast for educators to check out. My favorite educator podcast is the Staff Room Podcast with Shay and Pav. I'm going to ignore the fact that you said that they're your favorite. I'm sorry. And just celebrate Shay and Pav for a minute. To, yes. be, to be fair, guys. To be fair, they're, your favorite they're too? my favorite. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes. All right. Give us a daily, weekly, or monthly routine every teacher should get into. I think everyone should take five to ten minutes every day and disconnect. Get outside and just be. Listen to what is around you, breathe in deeply, and just be within yourself. And finally, the best piece of advice you've ever received. Academics can take a back seat to teach vital skills that students need to access those academics. That's behavioral, organizational, technology, whatever they need to access their, their academics. Mm-hmm. You can teach those first. Wow, Ray, I think she nailed it. I mean, that's trophy worthy without a doubt. It just worthy. just is. It just is. Yes. You have killed it. I know you said you were, I don't know, nervous or something. So silly. You were rocking this. And I know you had a crazy day. And I'm so glad that you're able to spend your evening recording with us. Would you mind sharing again how people can stay connected to you? I, I love that you have such a dedication to connecting and supporting other educators. I'd love to make sure that our listeners can stay connected. Yes, yes. And I absolutely mean it. Please reach out to me. I'm happy to talk with people and make connections. You can find me on Twitter at Hananiah, H-A-N-N-A-H-N-I-A. I do have a Facebook page. It's filled with kids, dogs, and food. So if you're interested <laughs> in that part of my life, I am Marie.McCumber on Facebook. Like I said, I'm on Instagram at Hananiah. Again, um, I don't post there, but I like to look at your pictures. So go ahead. Um, and Voxer. I am on Voxer at Hannah and I as well. I am I am seeing in my notes here a book. I do. I have a book I'll coming out. Take a, a minute or two here. Tell us about that real quick. I have a picture book that was it was published before, but it's being republished by EduMatch. It's being released August 5th. It's called My Name is Not Jamie. It is based on the true story of a little boy that I worked with when I taught in a preschool for t- children with disabilities. 
on an Air Force base in Germany. Um, his dad was deployed, and it's the story about kind of about how Jamie, um, his name was changed, how Jamie changed when his dad was deployed. Interesting. Awesome. All right. Over at the Edgy Match. Yeah. Um, uh, fantastic. Uh, you know, you can find all the links and all the resources, everything we mentioned in this episode over at teachbetter.com and the show notes, as well as the really important links for connecting with Marie and keeping the conversation going. So be sure to head over to teachbetter.com for all of that. Make sure you hit subscribe so you don't miss any of the upcoming episodes. And if you can give us a rating and review, we'd really appreciate that as well. Let's keep taking this one step further. Just think of three of your colleagues who need to hear these amazing stories and connect with these amazing educators and just share this podcast with them. Uh, Marie, this was Awesome. Such a great episode. I'm so happy that we got you on here uh, and, and got to share. Um, and I hope that people will take the time to, to connect with you so they can continue to learn to grow with you. And I just really appreciate you taking some time to hang out with Ray and I. Thank you. Oh, man. I am so thankful that I got to hang out with you too and talk to you too tonight. I was very excited all day for this. Awesome. And until next time, let's get out there and let's teach better. Mm-hmm.